Yes, yes, y'all. So we back at it again, man. This is another episode of Cliff Notes. And um, you know how we do with this one, man. It's just an opportunity to connect with good people who are doing good things and, and kind of see where people are at and what they're up to. Um, we've had an opportunity to do some dope interviews with um, with cats like my man Dupre from Seattle, um, Slim Kid Trey. Um, we got something coming up with my man Starchild. We've done we've done it with DJ OG One. So a bunch of a bunch of really really good conversations and interviews that we've had. So you can check them all out on iTunes. Subscribe on iTunes. You can check them out through the website djcliff.com. You can check them out on SoundCloud. So whatever your preferred uh, means of streaming podcast, that's the way to go. And then as always, man, you know you can check me out every week on Welcome to the Neighborhood on X Ray FM, uh, 107.1 and 91.1 in the portland metro area and uh you know just check out some really good music and also in uh, conversations with artists and then um like always man you know if you if you really want to support you really want to connect and get down there's there's ways to do that we're still working on trying to get that uh that sizzle pie uh you know sponsorship because i definitely give them enough for my dough you know but uh yeah man however you want to connect man definitely do that so this uh, this interview I'm super excited about, man. This this is one um, that uh, is always a good time to connect with this guy. I'm a man who's been in the industry doing his thing for a minute, and um, has always has always just been a a real great support of everything that I've done. So without any further ado, man, let him know who you are. Peace, peace. This is Elemento, uh, Visionary Crew, CA all day. Oh uh, man, just blessed to be here. No doubt, no doubt, man. It's uh, it's been a while since we had a chance to really get into it. I know you called the radio show a little bit ago, and we were talking about the new release, man. But to just be able to chop it up, it's been a minute since we had a chance to do that. Yeah, seriously. Uh, what was it? It was in the the RV last time. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was, dude. Oh, it was on the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. But like, like I said, man, it's just it's always good to um, to connect with you and, and and sort of see what's happening and get people up on what's going on, man. So I guess I guess you know to really start things off, let everybody know that you do have um, a fairly new project that you just released. So I want to definitely touch on that, man. You and Mr. Brady put a project out. Uh, yeah, it's uh, titled Twenty Five Eight, produced by Aesthetic. Uh, this cat from Brooklyn. Um, yeah, I mean, Brady and I, we put in a lot of work together, so it was real natural for us to just come together and, and, and scribe to basically all the beats that Aesthetic was floating us. Because um, early in, I, I was doing some stuff with him, and uh, and then what had happened, I think Brady got on a song, and, and he really felt it, and I just was like, man, why don't we do a full-length album, and... and between uh, Brady going to school shows and, and all the other life stuff, we, uh, you know, we weren't able to uh, do anything but that, you know what I mean, outside of the necessity. So we, we just locked in. and Because uh, normally we'll have multiple albums going on at one time, and it's kind of chaotic and whatnot, whereas with 25.8, we definitely uh, we got busy with that one. That was, that was a fun project. No doubt, chopping it up with Elemental. Um, I know that you spoke on it. Like people who who check out the album uh, through different sources, um, you explain the title of the album. But uh, speak on that right quick, man. The twenty five eight. Where does that come from? Yeah, twenty five eight. I mean, it, it's just a basic concept. It's you know, twenty four seven is like the laid out game plan for us. You know, but we just we kind of took it to the extent as, man, we need an extra day and an extra hour for, for what we're trying to do, you know? So we just, you know, it's something, I've, I've been raised on that, that whole saying, so it was just one of those, like, we just grabbed it out the air and and it stuck for the album title because uh, I, I feel like that definitely fits uh, Brady and myself and, and uh, the cat aesthetic. He, he's super nice with it, you know what I mean? And, and that's what I always like working with, cats that have heart that are dope that that, you know it doesn't go in the order of popular you know great uh marketing and then they're talented you know what i mean it's like i almost rather you know popularity and and all that other hoopla just that that doesn't really exist to me when it comes to making music you know so 
it was really dope working with this cat because uh, he respects what we do, and, and we obviously respect what he does. So it was a good chemistry for sure. No doubt. How, how did well, you, how'd y'all connect? What's that? Well, that classic internet connection, you know what I mean? It, it's funny because uh, one of my favorite albums, uh, Devilish Dandruff with Holy Shampoo, was produced by this cat, Young Keys from France. And that was through the MySpace era, you know what I mean? And, and, <laughs> and it was like, it, it's funny, it's like, it, it's kind of one of those guilty, uh, you know, uh, you almost feel, because, you know, I grew up in studio sessions where you actually, like, make songs with the producers or beat maker, or whatever extent they are. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you, you build on site, you know what I mean? So uh, I remember that that particular album broke my my shell as far as like oh man i would never do an internet album that's crazy how can you even do, you know like i was still analog with that concept but once uh you know once i was able to lock in studio time and just crack them out and send them to them and yeah no so it, it was similar with this project because uh like i said dude is real nice with the beats and so it wasn't hard to write to you know because sometimes you got to see the beat that uh you know, what I've learned over the years is, say, if I hear a beat that, you know, just right off, like, I'm like one of those half a second kind of cats. Like, you know, you put on a beat, and I just get that feeling instantly. There's no, like, oh, let me sit on it for a week, see if I can rock. It, it's It's got to be instant, you know what I mean? And, and so, uh, but I've learned that when you're able to know that, in an instant, you got to get creative and you got to put this beat to the test. You can't back out and be like, nah, let me hear another beat. Like, basically challenging myself, you know what I mean? And so I've, I've learned to do that where, you know, this, this particular album, 25.8, it was just like, you know, we download the beat, push play, like, oh, snap, this one, let's just go. Like, he'd send us four or five beats at a time and we'd just go down the line of them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we wouldn't even, like, you know, oh, uh, let's see about this one, until the tail end of the album where we started, you know, trying to figure out, you know, all right, well, we got too many beats like this, we got too many beats like that, you know, and then we started more or less formulating it, but, um, but yeah, man. Wow, chopping it up with Elemental. It's funny, dude, last night, um, when I, on the radio show, I actually had Theory Has It live on the, on the, um, on the air, and a, a local MC, Mike Capes, came through, and they was chopping it up. And um, you know, speaking of just kind of getting together in one spot to to record, and, and really not even just record, but just to kind of get together and and sort of vibe. It it speaks to what you were talking about. Like that's just with the internet age and the and the the opportunity to connect with people literally all over the world. It seems like that's really the norm, and to have to have cats look to, to get in the studio or just get together and sort of vibe and, and build like that. Um, it is a little bit of a, a lost, I guess, I don't know if lost art is, that's probably too extreme a thing to say, but it's just, it's just not the norm like it used to be. Well, yeah, I think, well, when you're able to, you know, utilize it in a good fashion and, you know, not even try to make the, I think at this point, there's not even a facade of, you know, we're older cats, so we get into this conversation, whereas younger cats, I, I don't even think that comes up. Like, <laughs> hey, will you guys studio? Like, that's not even the question. Like, if you have footage online of you guys in the studio making the song, yeah. then people, you know, then they take it for what it's worth, whereas before, or, you know, now, it, they don't even care. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're about, you know, just push and play uh, as long as I could turn up to it or whatever, you know, it's like... It, 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 it's it's a whole different dynamic. It's kind of like that. <laughs> that's how I look at uh, like even how the R and B music we grew up on. It was like you could marry a woman to the song that you were playing. Yeah. Like it was like you know it, it might have been a little bit gay for the for the uh, uh, you know more uh, classic church scene. You know they we we had we had songs that were groundbreaking in, in the R and B stuff, but now it's just so like. Yo, man, like you can't even play that to your wife because she'll feel suspected. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, 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 it's just a whole shift of consciousness, of, of mentality, of you know, compromise, uh, the, the whole nine. So it's like I'm starting to just see it as like everything goes with everything, right? So 
um, it's all kind of moving in one motion, but um, it's dope. Like, for instance, that cat aesthetic, he's, he's a younger cat, so uh, there's big up to all the old souls, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I definitely, when I was a young kid, you know, I, I would always have elders tell me, like, yo, you got that old soul. You're, you know, that kind of approach to me. So, because I, I just, I respect experience and I respect, uh, you know, just life and, and, and all the things that, that we've been blessed with. So, uh, you know, I, I definitely like to put that into the music, whether it's in the studio with the producer or online. You know what I mean? I definitely, like, I don't think, you know, albums shouldn't have a category like, you know, in studio recorded or like, you know, internet sessions or you know what i mean it, it, at the end of the day it really ultimately it, it's about how good the music is you know and, and but but definitely there's a dynamic there's there's a dynamic that you can't accomplish because then you know if, if you build build then you're sending sessions back you know back back and forth so much it's like dang do we just buy a plane ticket and <laughs> out for like four days because you know, really, if you set your mind to it, you don't even have to sleep. If, if you already know you're going into a session to accomplish a project, that's what I could, that's what I found out, you know, with the 10-pack. It was like, you know, you you set your mind to it, and that's it. There's no nothing, I mean, nothing, and I, I mean nothing is going to stop you. You know what I mean? So, um, rock on, man, internet. Yeah, all that. Yeah, let me. But let's speak on that right quick, man, because that's kind of a. I mean, that's kind of a significant thing. So for folk who don't know, in the year 2010, my man O um, set out to release uh, ten records, ten ten albums, not ten records, ten albums in the year 2010. Set out to do it and completed the project, um, which is just like on one hand you think, all right, well you know people will put out like three and four and five mixtapes and an EP, and a couple singles in a year, but like, we talking about 10 full-length, fully produced projects that were all like, each each and every one in its own right was uh, was dope, man. And and I think we, I think we might have touched on this a minute ago, man, but I mean, you just talked about the toll that that took on you um, putting in all that work. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that I mean... In hindsight, you know, it's definitely, you know, when I when I see people talk about uh, quality over quantity, I always laugh because I'm like, man, if you can accomplish quantity with quality, why not? Like, what, you know, because uh, what I've learned, like, especially with the Internet craze, right? Well, yeah, damn, I sound old school, but, you know, when, 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 the, when, when it hits so hard and everything's moving so fast, I just saw that oh, man, I can't stay to the same, all right, let, let's get a 12-inch going because um, no one's buying 12 inches at the time. And then let's, uh, you know, the touring never left. So that that's the thing that will never, you know, internet or not, touring is an absolute necessity, but that's a whole nother subject. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for me, I just, you know, it basically, the 10-pack came with literally kind of a joke. It was like, you know, because I had so much stuff recorded at, at LD's house, uh, DJ I used to rock with, and, you know, he was like, uh, you know, man, I, we got to either get you a new drive or, <laughs> you know, something, because it's taken, you know, because he had sessions for other artists as well. And so, you know, we're just sitting there, and I was like, man, 10, 10, 10 is coming up. Holy smokes. Yo, what if we did 10 out, like, literally, just like that. It was like... Yo, what if we did, and we're tripping like, oh man, that'd be incredible. And then I get on the phone with Key, kind of to like shut it down, like because Key's always been a, a Key Cool of Visionaries is who I'm speaking of. But he, uh, he's always kind of been, you know, a voice of reason on you know certain things. I just don't hear it, you know what I mean? But you know, so I, I'll call him though every now and then check in, you know, you know, man, is this a crazy idea? I mean, I know it's crazy, but is it like feasible, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so I thought him about this idea and he just was like, Oh man, like that's incredible. Like, let's go. Yeah. And I, it just blew me away that he was so hyped on it. Cause you know, that, that was kind of at a point where, uh, you know, even for up above, it was kind of like, you know, not a last hoopla, but you know, or a hoorah, I would say. I shouldn't say hoopla, but anyway, yeah, uh, 
it, it just it was just one of those crazy things that and then all through it I had people close to me, people online, whatever, like super saying like first of all I don't even want one album at Elemental. Why the hell do I want <laughs> ten albums? Yo and then especially every month, like, come on, dude, like what is this? You know, and then it kept going like three albums in and like it would become like Yo, this dude's serious. Like, what the hell? And on top of that, we would have videos to accompany each album up to the eighth album, just on purpose, because we just, uh, um, when Idea had passed, I had released my Elemental is Dead album. Yeah. And just out of respect, I was like, yo, man, like, the homie really passed on. You know, for me, Elemental is Dead was more of like a... a I just did, this is my 10th album, something's got to evolve, like this, something's got a cocoon out of this, you know what I mean? So it just, it felt right to title my album Elemental is Dead, but we fell back on any type of promotion uh, for respect to Idea and his family and, and his, uh, you know, real experience, you know what I mean? And not like him and I were mega close, but we were close enough for, if he was alive, you know, he'd be like, yo, I like this album or whatever, you know, so we, we had that kind of communication, but... All I'm saying is, is like, yeah, that was that was uh, that particular thing made us fall back on, and then it just kind of put things into perspective too, because you know it's really it, it, it becomes to where, you know, I, like working on multiple albums at one time, but focusing on each one in the same token, it was like it just showed me so much within myself and, and how to work with people and. and how to, you know, just even the basics of how to uh, speak with people and, and just because there was a lot on the production and that I had to gather up and people just riding with me on the concept. Like, yeah. they didn't care about anything other than the accomplishment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, you know, post the 10 pack, you know, a few things unraveled, you know, and certain people felt a certain way about certain things and, and you know, like, how come this one got more acclaim than mine? You know, like, just kind of like, word, like, yo, we blazed through this, like, on a high note, and now you want to, you know, all right. You know, so it was, it kind of, like, lifted up a, a veil, if you will, which is good for me, you know what I mean? It's, you know, you're supposed to move lighter when you get older, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, all in all, man, that project, that, that was, like, pretty much a, a game changer for myself, you know what I mean? And then, um you know, it, it shoot. It didn't send me to the top of the hill. That's for damn sure. If anything, it almost you know put me in the in the in the homeless shelter. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was all pure. That was just a self. You know, that's that's it, man. I just I I love to be able to say that that I you know because even still I bring it up to people and they're like, wait, what? Huh? Yeah. Like you know, so. Well, but, yeah, it, it, and it's crazy. I mean, just again, you know, if you if you go on like um, Discogs or, or just searching search iTunes or whatever and just plug in LMNO and you just see just the vast amount of of material even, even outside of the ten pack that you've released, man. I mean you have you have been working for a minute, man, just putting out amazing presents. It's funny because, you know, I first I first actually connected with you or learned of you through um, the Sphere hip hop site. And I, I want to say it might have been the, the Economic Food Chain music album was the first one that I saw of yours and then just started listening and getting to know more of who you are and what you do. And um, and then after that, that's actually like I, I'd heard of I've heard I'd heard of the Visionaries crew, but didn't like wasn't really um, connected with them. And then, you know, learned of that. And, like, man, you've done. Like you've done you've done some amazing stuff in your career, man. Traveled the world touring, and um, yet have always stayed so grounded and connected to uh, to 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 what's really important. Because if people follow you on social media or whatever, and the things that you that you continue to share with us, not just through your music, but just through stuff that you post. I mean, it's like like how have you done that? How how have you been able to just stay stay connected and stay grounded? With all of those, uh, all those accomplishments that you've that you've had. Well, I mean, accomplishments aside, you know, if if I was, you know, uh, 
just doing my job as, as a plumber and, you know, you know, there's not a lot of praise that comes with that because you're just doing your job and you do it good or whatever, whatever. But honestly, I attribute all that to my, my grandmother and my mom. Um, cause they always just, they, they just, and not like they were superstars, you know, I mean, to me they were, but I'm saying like, you know, so they didn't have, like, they didn't give me an example of like, okay, you're this kind of person, but you got to be this kind of person. You know what I mean? Like they just, an example carried themselves so humbly and, and I would see them in comparison to other people's grandmothers and mothers, you know, just within my neighborhood. And I'm like, dang, man, I have it so good. <laughs> like, like so good. Not even in like a, a spoiled sense, just on a, the teachings I got, the indirect teachings. Um, you know, my grandma, you know, uh, you know, we, we, uh, you know, go to the homeless shelter in downtown Long Beach, uh, you know, throughout the year and help out at, at her church. And, and so she just, she, she always had this, uh, giving spirit that I was like, man, I, I love that. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, and my step pops who was super like, he's where I get my work ethic from straight up and down. Cause I've, I've never seen that man not work even post, uh, you know, having a major surgery that that man was up on a ladder, like four weeks after, like just killing it. Like, so I, I really like, you know, uh, have them to, uh, you know, to basically they, they set the standard for me. And then as far as the music stuff goes all in all honesty, um, the, the experience that DJ speed, um, opened up for me, DJ Speed, um, is basically Easy es right hand man, was DLC's tour DJ. Um, you know, he was like the, a close, loose member of NWA, if you will. I mean, he never gets mentioned in anything because, you know, it's just what it is. But, uh, the, so to see that experience, and I'm not just saying this because the movie dropped, it's not, you know, none of that, but so to see that experience and how, um, people of, of stature treat other people yeah. like Eric he, or easy always treated like it didn't matter. Like if you came up to him on some, yo, easy man, da, 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 he would chop it up with you. You know what I mean? Yes. He had bodyguards, you know what I'm saying? Rightfully so back then. But point being is, is like, um, I, that, that's one thing I always admired about like, you know, because I was gassed. I was like, man, this is easy. E, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I'd be in the close background and just see how he interacts and this and that. And I was like, wow, that's really dope, man. That's, that's really, really dope. And then fast forward when I actually, I was a roadie for, um, for a reggae band. Um, when I was living in, in Florida, I was like, I did their sound on the boards. I, you know, I took in and out the gear would help break down, set up, yada, yada. Um, which I actually really loved, man. It was dope. Like I was heavy, you know, it was a, a live, uh, like an authentic reggae band named tribal style. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I got to do their sound and whatnot. But, uh, so long story short, uh, one of the band members used to like chunk me out, like, you know, like throw me a bag and be like, Hey man, carry this, this, this. And I'm like, yo man, like, first of all, you're nobody. <laughs> you know, Second of all, I'm here helping out, like, you know, so it, it, I remember that that always stuck with me because I think the first tour I went on, like, you'll, you know, you'll see the pack of the performers, like, ahead, and I'm in the back, you know, not, I'm not trying to crown myself out, but it's just, I, I feel a way, it's like, I can't just give somebody to do something for me that I can do for myself, yeah. you know, like, you can be utilized to do something grander than, you know, carrying my bags, right. you know what I'm saying, right. like, right. I, I just, that's, it's not my MO and it's never been. So I think that's also had a lot to do with my tone of the career that I so-called career that I have, you know, to me, it's just more of a love and a passion that I get to share with people. And, uh, you know, it's not, you know, I, I still have, have real life things that I got to deal with that, that most of my, my popular peers, you know, kind of look like, dang, man, how do you do it? Like, what do you do it for? Like, how, you know, this and this, where I'm like, man, I truly, you know, I truly love making music. You know what I mean? That's why I never understand how you, you know, cats on labels and miss release dates and this and that. I just, I, I, man, like, 
you know, it, to me, it's like, and I, I'm not shatting on anyone. Like, I just, the kind of person I am is like, I just, I'm a doer. You know what I mean? I, I just like, if I see something, I'm going to do it. And, and that's it. Like, um, yeah, man. No, nah, no doubt. But you know, so since, since, since you brought it up, I was going to get to it. But since you brought it up, man, um, in terms of your connect with, with, uh, with DOC and, and, and easy and them cats, man, man, you got to let people know, uh, where they can go and check out your little cameo, man. Ah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, dude, that, that flipped my whole junior high experience, man. Let me tell you. Um, yeah, the formula video, uh, and there's a funny story to this too, because, um, you know, basically starred in the, uh, new kids in the hood. Yo, man, we got the right stuff. That was my cameo. You know what I mean? <laughs> my like half a second of fame. Um, and, 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 the, the real backstory to it was I was the only one, you know, I, I came to the shoot with DJ Speed just to show up, just to uh, observe and watch and just be there. And like, like I said, I'm, I'm like, what was it? Like eighth or ninth. Yeah. I think like eighth or ninth grade, you know what I mean? And like uh, crazy, like I'm going to this uh, crazy video too. Like what the hell is this kid doing? Yeah. And, and, and uh, so I'm at the shoot and, uh, and a mutual friend of DJ Speed and I, he, he actually, his name was Chicken MC. He was like a, a OG from uh, uh, Long Beach in the Wrigley. And he was actually like, you know, he really did his, he was like a real street kid. Like, it wasn't just like, you know, who's this Filipino kid? Try, you know, and he rocked Dookie Gold Chain. You know, like, he was crazy, this yeah. kid, Chicken MC. And so uh, Dre comes over and he's like, hey, man, I want you... Uh, you know, we're going to have this auditioning thing and I want you guys to be new kids in the hood. And I was like, new kids in the hood? I was like, hell no. Are you crazy? Because I, I literally, at this point, I, I wanted to rap. You yeah. know, I, I've, I've already had it in my head that, you know, I'm going to actually put my left foot forward to this. And so I, I took it as like, man, you're trying to sabotage me before I even, like, get the notion to rap. Like, there's no way. And so literally, Dre and I are arguing. And I didn't... Dre Schmay, like, it's just this person, you know, possibly impairing my future, you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to do this. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. You know, and, and I was <laughs> 10 times more stubborn as a kid, you know, and no one's putting hands on me, so it, I was good. So I was, like, talking my shit. Like, no, yeah. no. And, like, so then finally Dre got, I, I broke down, obviously, and uh, got to sign the paperwork off or whatever. And, and it was funny because when we left, DJ Speed was like, ah, oh, man, don't even trip, man. That'll probably hit the cutting floor. And I was like, what's the cutting floor? Right, right. He's like, oh, that's where all the stuff that doesn't make the video hits. But, you know, I'll make sure I'll get you a reel of it just so it'll be fun for you. Yeah. I was yeah. like, all right, a few months. Or back then, yeah, I guess it would have been a few months or like a month passed by. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're, we're at Easy's house, and he comes in with the video. And I was just blown away. I was like, oh, my God, I was like super embarrassed, man, because also during the take, you know, the filming of it, yeah. Easy and I kept like, we had lines that he was like, all right, let me hear you then or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I would, I almost was, I think, subconsciously trying to sabotage the shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then all they needed was one. And when I finally did it, they were like, all right, that's enough. That's it. We got it. You know, I mean, I. I, I I had Toddy P's Lokes on, right, you know, right. I had, uh, I forgot whose Raiders hat I had on. I think that might've been mine or whatnot, but, uh, yeah, it was just hilarious, man. It was really hilarious. Cause you know, I, I've always been, you know, the same dude, you know what I mean? It's not like, uh, yeah. So it, it's, just, it's funny, man. That was a great experience. Cause then when I got to school after the video dropped, I'd walk down the hall and be like, yo man, we got the right stuff. <laughs> Like, I swear I made it. Like, I was like, oh, man, but I was low-key embarrassed because that's not how I wanted to get acknowledged, you know. But back then, it was like, oh, you're in a video with the greatest rapper on earth. What right. are you talking about? Like, right, right. You know what I mean? Whereas I'm looking at it, like, selfishly, like, nah, but watch. One day, you're going to hear me. Like, <laughs> Wow, dude. Yeah, that was fun, man. Good time. Chopping it up with LMNO. So are you in, are, are, are you in, a, you in DLC still, still in contact? Oh, well, I was never tough like that with DLC. It was more uh, DJ Speed. Was, gotcha. was, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, to this day, like, I, you know, we'll at least we'll text, you know what I mean, and just check in and be like, 
because he's always had this like distant on look. You know what I mean? Like never really had a hand on anything post. Right. Like when I started rocking with, with Black Forest and, and Visionaries, like we had already, you know, he, he ventured off into the skate realm. Like he's a survivor. So when Easy passed, he didn't flop. You know what I mean? Some people fell by the wayside. He kept it moving. You know what I mean? So big up to DJ Speed. But no um, yeah, man. I just brought it up because, you know, that uh, recently the, the word came out that the DOC sounds like he might be getting his voice back. Yeah, that's what I heard, and I, I actually, I yeah, I had to shout him out on Twitter, like, yo, big ups for new kids in the hood, man, we love you. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's real, man, like, that was such a tragic story that even at the time when Eric was, when Easy was alive, yeah. he kept telling Doc, like, you know, and, and I don't mean this to be disrespectful, I hope, you know, there should be no backlash within me saying this, but, you know, in all due respects, Easy was real animate about, yo, man, I got you. I'll pay for your 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 recovery. You know, there was a surgery that needed to take place. But uh, from what I understand, Doc's whole thing was, this is just what God gave me, and I got to go through it. Yeah. You know, like he had kind of like a, you know, whatever stance he was, it was like, so it's really dope to hear that, that he came out of whatever stubbornness or whatever, and he just, he let that, that, that uh, blessing flow, man, because, yeah, just like, like on Twitter, man. Like, it, it's incredible. Like, I, you know, in all due respect, I had to stop following him once he got his voice back because my whole timeline was just DLC <laughs> got his voice back. DLC got his voice back. Deals. And I'm just like overwhelmed. And he's not even trending, so yeah. that's disrespectful in the first place. So I'm like, all right, forget it. But I had to unfollow those. <laughs> just too much. I love him. But Jeez. I'll buy the album when it drops. Don't trip. No doubt. No doubt. Chopping it up with Elemento, man. So, you know, uh, got, just kind of getting back to, to, to your work, man. Um, you know, the album the album dropped with you and Mr. Brady. Um, and I know that you're constantly, constantly working. Um, are you folk planning on any follow-up or touring or just what's next? in terms of stuff that you've got going, stuff that, you know, people can look for from, from you? Well, um, yeah, I think this might be, cause you know, we did so much at one point, you know, to where, uh, you know, we're, we're deaf. I know he's going to be releasing a new instrumental album, um, you know, cause he's heavy with the beats. Uh, and I think he's going to have another Mr. Brady solo album fairly soon. Okay. And, um, yeah, I've actually been, you know, that, yeah, you're right. I mean, we just always stay working. So, um, actually to the point to where can't even really tour at this point right now because uh, working on a few projects that are really, you know, kind of home base worthy, you know what I mean? Like, nah, I got to stay back for this one. So, okay. Okay. yeah, man, just been, uh, yeah, keeping it moving. No doubt, no doubt. Chopping up yeah, with yeah. The, the, the the consistency that you've had with the content that you've put out over the years, you know, I think one of the um, one of the constant things that that we see is in terms of your content um, and in terms of the quality of the music that you put out. Um, with the ability going back to what we we're talking about, I mean, people can can get into their their home studios and just like start in the morning and then in the afternoon have two or three joints that they knocked out and quickly post them up on, on, on sphere hip hop or whatever, or not sphere hip hop, my bad on a uh, SoundCloud or, or whatever. But there's a lack of, well, and, and these are my words. I think that there's a lack of um, awareness or focus in, in what people are putting out there. Um, and, and maybe a lack of awareness of how that's going to impact all the ears that get an opportunity to get a taste of that. Um, you know, why have you chosen to, to not go that route, you know, to, to, to just hop on whatever's, whatever's the latest trend or not just be conscious about, you know, what comes out of your mouth and goes on the record. Because I mean, well, that's the I thing, guess. you know what I mean? I mean, that's like nowadays, I think that's what, that's what oftentimes we see is people just want to put out whatever's, you know, whatever's, Whatever's clever, whatever's whatever's a hot new thing, with with not necessarily worrying about or thinking about the impact that it can have. Yeah, I mean, I, I really feel like, um, I mean, one, I think you know, uh, 
I'm going to be funny with this, but this just popped in my head and I might be reaching, but the lack of courtship and like investing in man, woman, and child, mm-hmm. I think has a lot to do with that, right? Because trip, trip on this, follow me for a second. Mm-hmm. Like when, when I was younger, like, you know, I was, I knew in my heart, all right, that's what I'm going to get, you know, at a, I'm, that's, that's the given. So like, you know, I was able to map out first and foremost, what was really important. Um, whereas I've noticed, or important to me, let me say, because now, I did, you know, there's been so much divorce, so much turmoil within the family structure. I understand why people don't want to commit to that lifestyle. Yeah. But what saved me and what's grounded me is putting, and this is just honest, this is an award-winning speech, but putting God and family first. Mm. Like, nothing else matters without that when outside, you know, when, all right, let's just, you know, God forbid, boom, we're in, you know, we're experiencing, uh, you know, just end of the world type experiences. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're wrapped up with your family. Your career is not going to do anything for you at that point. Your career is not going to, uh, look to you to say, help you or you save you know, there's, there's no, that's not even tangible. So knowing that I've never really taken it serious from the gate. Like it's just that, you know, when the stars lined up, as they say, he cool, Doug Cotto, they had the, the notion that, Hey, we can press vinyl. You guys pump these songs out. We got an outlet, and that's all it was. That's really all it was. And then when all, you know, started reading magazines and seeing, like, you know, oh, man, things taking off, and, and like I said, peers going certain ways and, and doing certain things different, what remained important to me was God and family, and that was it. That's all that mattered because you'd have peaks and valleys, you know what I mean? And, and like, you know, certain things would boom in, in, the, in the music, and then your family would be rocked or, or your family's booming and your music's rocked. You know what I mean? So it's like, to me, I just, the balance is important. Is like, as long as my family's good on all fronts, then everything else is, is all right. And that's what allows me the freedom. Cause I, I know a lot of life situations get in the way of people's creativity or the ability to create, you know what I'm saying? Whereas, I've, I, from an early age, invested in my future by cutting out. Dude, I'm going to be honest, man. This is straight up. And I've been clowned for this, and I've been bigged up for it. But I've never left the show with a groupie. I've That's never tough. done that. Yeah. I've that whole heart, all Christ aside, all, all Christian rapper, all Flander jokes aside, I've never slept with a groupie. Just because I respect myself enough to not have to do that, one. Two, I got that Jones out of my system before I even hit a stage. Like, I, I laugh to say I had that kind of stuff even before I rapped. Like, I had girls chasing me and whatever, whatever. Right, to right. where, you know, when I when it comes to the, to the rapping stuff, I always kind of, you know, make sure my face is extra bushy, make <laughs> sure my hair is kind of messed up. Like, I don't, I'm not trying to be a pretty boy in this. Like, don't, you know, for me, Leave My Name Out was about the message and, and what I'm bringing to the table, not me as a physical being, because that's why I put in so much work now, because, you know, I'll respect to like someone like Tupac when, you know, next week he might have a, a project dropping, but right. it's like, come on, man. Like what the heck? You know, it's like, yeah. it, it gets like, we get numb to it. Whereas like, dude, I'm going to do that on the flip side. I'm going to be alive and dump all this material before I go, that's kind of my goal, you know, and it's not so my children can be rich in that sense. Like if anything, they can be rich, how I was rich in seeing my mother and grandmother, they can see their father as someone who was about that life on all, on all accords. And so therefore what kind of example is that for them other than a good example? And so therefore I did my job, man, woman, and child, like not, there's not man, same woman and child it, it's that's not even part of it so i've never subscribed to it from the get and that's why i'm at where i'm at proudfully you know a lot of times i you know i hit those blocks of like dang man we should have done that thing with pepsi dang man we should have but that's just because I'm, I'm stuck in a in a in a mind state that's not you know uh balanced in it you know so I, i'm definitely no perfect human being in that sense so 
big up to all my homies that have succeeded and not have to lift a finger other than to write a rap or go on tour and all that stuff, man. I'm super proud of you guys. Like that that's a that that's a big feat, you know. It's almost like sacrificing uh peace of mind, sacrificing uh a bunch of things to be able to live that, that life. And and so I'm not one I'm not one to be jealous or, or spite anyone that that you know that has that lane successfully, you know what I mean? Because I don't look at my lane as a lack of success because I'm not constantly touring. Because, you know, if, obviously if I was touring more, I probably would have a lot lot more releases. I always, like, I think I said that as a joke a while ago. I was like, someone booked me so I could stop recording sh- uh, all these albums. Like, you know, <laughs> book, me, book me a two-year tour, please. I'm you know, never tired of recording because then, then I thought about it and it was like, wait, I can record on the road. That's dumb. I would do that. I would go to the hotel. I would have like a tour inspired album by the time the tour is done. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's no running from it. <laughs> <laughs> Chopping it up with LMNO. Um the uh I just gotta I just gotta randomly throw this in. Um, you know, I'm talking about all of the all the releases and how I've how I've you know, become a fan of you as an artist. Um, even outside of becoming a fan of you as a human being. But I just got to oh, say, go. B, that selective hearing part two, mm. man! <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you know, okay, oh, boom. So what's dope about that project is is that Kev actually flew out. I forgot how many times, like, because I, I don't think we did it in one pop, but... You know, it was when we would promote the first album by doing shows, he would come out on the West Coast, and then we would lock in the studio, you know, days at a time. And that really, because the first one, that was the internet album. That was the back and forth joint. The second one is definitely that feel because it, like, Trek Life came to the studio. You know, uh, uh, I went to Charlie Tuna's, um, you know, the East Coast homies, that was internet, but... By the time they got it, Kevin and I had already laced it, so they were, like, you know, pumped up. So um, that was a super dope, energy-filled album, for sure, for sure. Man, Definitely. I, that, that album gets, I mean, cuts from that album get get regular play on, on the radio uh, show, man. Such a dope project. Big up. Such a dope thank project. Thank you, thank you, man. Um, and so, you know, when y'all, when, y'all, when y'all get ready to do Selective Fear in Part 3, let me know so I can help you promo. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> I hear that. Chopping there up with LMNO, man. Um, <laughs> is, there, is there any, um, you know, and, and it's funny, you know, to talk about uh, the Visionaries or the, or the possibility of there being another Visionaries project because you folks stay connected, you know, and pieces aren't showing up on each other's solo, solo joints. But is there, um, you know, has there been any talk about doing another full Visionaries project? Man, I I had to give up talking about it because that's all I would talk. Like it just annoyed them. Like you know, they're like, "Yo, man," because everyone for different reasons. You know, certain people like Dan who's ready at the heartbeat. Like you know, uh, basically it just you know, you know everybody's ready to make it pop, but. Rhett is just really instrumental on it's got to be right. You know what I mean and. and my whole thing, you know, so I, again, I'm the argue kid in the group, and I'm like, man, what's not right about right now? You know, because like, you're talking to the wrong person about timing and this and this. I'm, don't talk to me about making music and timing and this. No, the now is right here, and that's what you have to commit to. Yeah. And, and, you know, that, that Rhett and I have had kind of a roadblock, but we are brothers through it, so we don't, you know, that's why you know, we don't like go at each other about it beyond just, you know, it's just reasoning it. That's all it is. It's nothing more major than that. I, I definitely get fired up because we have a song that he produced that he's sitting on that I'm just like, dog, like, dude, like, (laughs) ah, but I love him and I have to respect his stance and his, his angle. You know what I mean? Like wherever he's going for, I have to trust that he knows what he's doing. But on the same side, one of the, you know, and this might seem a little morbid, but the inevitable passing 
has always kind of kept the fire under me. Yeah. Because I'm like, dog, we're not in the, this interview wasn't guaranteed. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we hang up, what we're about to do isn't guaranteed. Like, nothing's guaranteed in life. So, I just, I never, and I'm not saying he doesn't appreciate that and he doesn't, you know, uh, live by that. But, at, you know, on all, on all levels, that's how I try to live. It's just, you know, right, get it done, get it done, get it done. And, like, you know, same thing. You can't leave your table until the, the food's done. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about the studio. It's like you can't leave until the song's done. And then when you start feeling that, then you want to eat more. And then you got two full plates. And then next thing you know, you know, so I'm definitely, yeah, like <laughs> I'm definitely uh, pushing for that. But I, I can't be too pushy because, you know, I don't want to piss anyone off and this and this. But I have to say, man, it's really, you know, uh, yeah, the the DJ the DJ has a lot to do with this this matter at this point in time, which I don't feel is wrong to say, you know, because uh, like I said, I yeah, That's because DJ that matter. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. You know, I had to put you on the spot, man. You know, I had to. That do was it. the most PC <laughs> response I gave, though. I want to curse him out so bad. I want to just like I want to throw rocks at his house. I want to just like do anything to stir the pot to be like. Dude, either let's fight physically. <laughs> All right, forget the PC response. Let me get to it. I'm Uh-oh. pissed. Hold on, hold on. I'm really pissed. Because Visionaries is my home. That's, I go so hard in the Like, trust me, man. I wish Visionaries had the 10-pack. I wish Visionaries had the 20-plus albums. Because I feel like physically, which the world is mainly about, is the physical, uh, Visionaries is that business. It's... It, 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 Dude, we go over to Europe, we walk to your town, I'm telling you, cars crash into each other, <laughs> uh, moms are dropping babies, grandmothers are running, old oh, men are fainting, this like, it's just incredible because we reflect the new world that the old world doesn't really see and they still kind of box out, but we actually represent that diversity, we represent that unity, like, when Zulu Nation, uh, you know, loosely took us under and whatnot. And I say loosely just because I haven't been a mega participant. Yeah. But when that was so honorable to me because I was like, indirectly, we've been that that movement from the gate. You know what I mean? Like, we we were the group with the white kid, the black kid, the, the Mexican kid, the, the two Filipinos and the, and the Japanese kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like, and that's Southern California. We're like the poster poster group for Southern California. That, that I always felt like, you know, we took so, like, we kind of at a certain point began to take for granted because, I, you know, I, I say this humbly, but we were running L.A. so tough yeah. with groups that were on major labels, and then we would get kind of boxed out of certain things because we weren't part of that realm yeah. that we were like, what the, f-? like, literally, we kind of got, you know, to where, okay, this is competition. Like, no matter how much homie we say to each other, what am I, you know, how much big ups, it's all competition. So L.A., to me, has been the friendliest field of competition for independent music post the major label debauchery. Like, when everybody got dropped off of majors or they left or whatever, whatever, and then it became the independent game that we've been rocking for years it was like, oh, word? Okay, now it's really on. Like, you know, it felt super, like, because then the, the pickings got slimmer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, man, don't get it twisted. Like, you know, I just recently got word of what the Chitlin circuit was, not knowing that I've been on it my whole damn run. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, that's what it's called. Right, right, right. Man. Okay, I get it. Like, there is a definite, all right, there's them over here, and then there's you guys. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, but you guys supply the, the, the common folk. You know what I mean? Like, if anything, I, I feel better in that 150 capacity and there's like 185 people in the place and there's like 40 people that can't get in, systems rocking, sweaty as can be, and it, it's, it, it's mixed gender, by the way. It's not just all dudes. Right. And, it, and it's <laughs> cracking. You know, like, to me, that's the pop-off, you know. But then on the flip side, the big arena shows that visions have done, you know, 
those have been crazy. Like we've gone overseas and, and, and literally, you know, have performed in like basketball arenas for like European league teams and stuff. And like, and like killing it though, not just like, Hey, we're the visionaries from LA. We're going to do some something. Nah, man. Like they, whatever native tongue is, you know, and they introduce the visionaries, there's like this floor that just gives you the goosebumps, you know? And like, for me, I, I remember the first like major, major, major visionary show we did that punked me out of the game. <laughs> I'm not even playing. I would, I like tippy toed on stage and the floor was crazy. Like we had enough singles out at the time that where we were the popping opening group. And it was like, you low key felt bad for the, for the headline <laughs> because we, we turned it out so hard unintentionally. Yeah. It was just insane because we had that innocence. We had that hunger. We had that drive that, I know we still have because we never, you know, we didn't get tainted. You know what I mean? Like we never got uh, major labeled, if you will. Right. You know what I mean? Like we never got that. We never got overexposed. We never did too many shows, like none of that. Like to where I feel like if Rhett was to drop that song tomorrow, we'd get, you know, offers left and right to come to come to wherever the city is. You know what I mean? Like, but then on the flip side, now with the single group concept, you know, just one rapper and a DJ, it's a lot more viable for people to, to build those kind of groups or, you know, that kind of act because, you know, traveling for the visionaries is not a, a, a cheap, you know, that, that's, that's not a, a low expense. You know what I mean? It, it's not easy to travel with six cats, you know what I mean? That all men now and that have families and this and this. So that's when life kind of interjects with the, Hey, don't forget I'm here. Right. Like whatever dream you had, like you might've wanted to execute that a few years ago, you know? So that's always a humbling thing is like, you know, we're, we're like the good news, bad news bears that, you know, didn't quite just, Oh, like we were right there. Like that's how we see it is like, we we're right, right, right <laughs> there. You know, it is, and I, I don't say that like the like the defeated person either because how many people get that opportunity to begin with? No doubt. So the fact that we even had the opportunity, I feel was that was the blessing. So everything else was just you know, that was just you know, we got the cake and then the frosting was you know, like, we, like we basically opted to not frost our cake out, you know what I mean? So which could be a good thing in the long run, you know, because we, you know, up above still, like, we're still, like, within reach of our masters. There's no drama. Like, you know, Key doesn't have goons after me, and I don't have, like, <laughs> you know, monks after him. And, like, I don't have this crazy, you know. That's why I love Daylight so much. Oh, yeah. Because you never hear anything but the music. Right. That's all they are to the public, and that's why they won with that Kickstarter thing is because they 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 don't have that extra BS, man. Like like you, I dare Dipset to try to do a Kickstarter. <laughs> How are you going to floss all that financial success, and now you need financial help? Right. Like, come on, man. Like, so they they've always been king to me. Daylight is like through it all has been like my favorite group. Just on that alone, let alone being dope musicians, you know what I mean? Like, they are true, true to the form, like, straight up and down. Like, I, I'm sure when the camera's off, the door shuts, you know, I'm sure it's not all just, hey, man, it's not all Daisy Age. Right. I know that much, right, right. you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, I know stuff gets real, but the point is, is they don't expose it, and they don't, so that's always been a good example to me, because if I didn't have that example, man, I'd be a little fire off. Like, yeah, for sure, me and Rhett would have fought by now. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Definitely. Uh, he would have been in the middle, like, kind of <laughs> both choking us out. Like, you know, like, controlling us, but choking us and at the same time. Like, oh, well, oh. <laughs> you know, like, because he, he has to endure. A, like, when we're in motion, he endures a lot because, you know, he's he's in between... You know, it's always been like, you know, dang, are we the conflict of interest group? Because we got a band member on the label. But at the end of the day, after working at the label, I'll let you know that there's no one stealing from anybody. So I used to always tell the group, man, like, kill any of that noise, dog. Like, trust me, I'm boxing Jurassic 5 vinyls. I'm boxing Health the Police vinyls. I'm boxing up Newmark album. I'm boxing up... Uh, 
what is it, Roddy Rod's album, uh, uh, you know, Kev Brown's 12 inch, you know, I'm, I'm not just, you know, we're not shipping out only visionary records in this. And that's what helped me see firsthandedly to be like, you know, so I never turned into that rapper that's like, you know, the label stealing from a B. Like, right, it was right. Cause I, I was blessed to see it firsthandedly. Now, if they were making sure I didn't get the actual visionary orders, that's different. Then we gotta <laughs> talk. But I, I, I swear, you know, it wasn't like that because, you know, within those other orders, of course, there would be a visionary 12 inch or a full length album or a CD or whatever, a t shirt. And, and man, it, it, I, I definitely will not be caught saying I miss those days, but I, I definitely appreciate and love those times because it just, it got to show me in between, you know, touring and whatnot, how much people were rocking with us. You know, I'm, I'm like pridefully zipping up these boxes with the boxing tape. And like leaving little notes in the box, like, yo, big up, man, appreciate the support. And that just meant so much to me, man. Like, that's how, I, I mean, you know, you could put me in a room with, with the most successful to even someone that's like aspiring to, to, you know, do a fingernail of what I've done. You know, I, I would still feel comfortable in my skin. I might not say as much because the more successful person probably has more to say. Yeah. But, I'll be in the room comfortable in my skin and speak when spoken to, you know what I mean? So, man, I, I'm so at peace with all this, man. It, 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 yeah, I feel like we really, we we made it out alive, man. Like, that's the main thing. But, I mean, nothing's like we were talking about earlier, you know, that's that's one uh, uh, energy that's probably, always kind of keeping me charged is like, we're alive right now, so you got to work right now. Like, you can't, you know, there's no missing the beat. You know what I mean? Like, I actually got a session after this that I, you know, I've been working, uh, and it's funny, full circle, man. Like, uh, when I first, like, my first recordings were, like, you know, mic'd up room with a drum kit, bass guitar, and a microphone. And, and I would just rap uh, with, with, with two kids that I grew up with, this cat, uh, John T, and this homie that's now known as Divine One. Okay. Um, and we used to make, you know, just these crazy recordings, like, you know, John T's mom would come in and say, James, you know, there's more words than the cuss words <laughs> in the vocabulary. Cause I mean, I was so rotten mouth, like Chuck, you know, I, I'm like, after leaving, you know, uh, NWA session, I come back to, you know, to, uh, Bixby knows to record with, with my homies and, you know, and we were real loose, like we were drinking, heavy young kids, you know, experimenting with other things. And so it was just wild recordings. Yeah. And, uh, um, so it was full circle. Now I'm working with that cat divine one. I've, I've also said that, that that cat John T was on elemental dead. Yeah. Uh, he was all over the 10 pack and we've done uh, a whole nother project, uh, called six foot trolls there. Uh, I don't know if that'll ever come out or not, but hopefully it will, but that's like a actual band. Uh, with me rapping over it and, and this and it, it's pretty trippy music, man. It's dope. It's just like, again, not like the go get a record deal kind of cat. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, like I'm just like, let things work out the other way. So anyhow, uh, I've been working with this cat divine one real heavy and we got a whole project that actually, uh, DJ Rome's is mixing. So I, I'm not sure if that's going to be my next, uh, release and that, that we're going to, um, do through my homies label called imaginary records. And, uh, you know, it'll be, uh, we're just going to try to come up with different ways to, uh, put it out. Like, I think, I, I don't know yet. We haven't wrapped our head around that one yet, but we're just in the process of making the music, which has been real fun. Cause you know, like even with, a, I had a, a full, full blown, uh, Mad Lib album that, uh, you know, off rip, it's like, Oh snap. But, I don't know if that's ever going to come out now because that happened, you know, now over five years ago. So it doesn't, you know, to me, I'm like, that's so in his hands. It's either in the trash can or it's just like, he's waiting to get through, you know, all this Freddie Gibbs stuff. Cause it, it's like the exact opposite of what, you know, a Freddie Gibbs album would sound like, you know, on subject matter alone. You know what I mean? Like the beats are mad lib obviously, but I'm like, maybe it's just not in his cards right now to, you know, maybe he's just rocking with that other angle of music right now. And, and when he feels like, you know, either he's got him, you know, just put out a polar opposite, he's got that album there for him. Cause, um, 
and it's sad about that thing because I don't even have a, a CD of it. I don't have uh, wow. anything of it. So it's like almost unreal. But so I, I just been going full steam regardless. Like I, you know, I, I'm definitely not, you know, defeated by that not coming out. I just, I learned a lesson though with like, you know, you don't, because uh, Ono put out a post. He was like, and this was when he first heard it. And he was like, ooh, this new Mad Lib Elemental album. No joke. Y'all ain't even ready type of text. Yeah. Uh, or a tweet, you know what I mean? And I just remember the the uh, the effect of it wasn't like, oh my God, you know, it was like, yes, the people that rock with, yes, you know what I mean? But it was like, there's such a long, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Like a long, hopeful line to get into the Mad Lib show right. that anyone not with that opportunity is going to super try to smash on it. Like I, I saw it from a mile away. I was like, Wait, he said what? Like, you know, it's weird. And I don't get caught up in the drama. I laugh at it, to tell you the truth. But, you know, I definitely am a hawk. Like, you know, I know how to observe. And, you know, I you, you won't see me until I want you to see me. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, wow, yeah. Wow, wow. Chopping it up with Elemental. Well, man, you know, again, it's, I, I think it's so, one, I just think it's so dope that um, that you have, the, the 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 massive amount of of material out there because I think your 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 music definitely contains a message that um, is uh, I mean not to come off as preachy or anything but you know I think what you have to say is really impactful and in a lot of ways beneficial to to humanity so um, but it's also cool to hear that you know it doesn't stop there that you are continuing to make music or you have continued to make music and that there's more that there's still more yet to come and um, man, it definitely goes without saying, brother, that um, at the end of the day, man, whatever I can do to continue to support and promote uh, what you're doing, um, I will definitely, you know, do my best to do that for real. Wow. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. And I, I hope to, you know, uh, continue to make music that is worthy of that. You know what I mean? Because that's that's always, you know, ah, oh, man, you got to like, you got to go a little more this angle, you know, this is suggestions coming to me. It's like, man, again, you're saying God, like word, like, yeah. we know, like you rock with God. Okay. <laughs> but to me, it, it's kind of like, you know, it's like sports illustrated. Like why would they go outside of their sports illustrated, you know, their, their script, you know what I mean? Like to me, I'm going to just supply, like if they're, my albums are more or less like subscriptions, you know what I mean? They're just like, this is what's going on in my world right now. If you're rocking, you're rocking. If not, you're not. You know what I mean? And 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 I have the luxury of not worrying about if it's a, you know, with being that, you know, not every album has to be a physical. I understand that because, you know, big up to the, you know, I have this album, Bronze Age, that was just digital. You know, that was super under the radar. And, uh, you know, but, you know, so for me, I, I just feel like, yeah, like definitely it's like, like I, I just like, coming with with uh subscriptions and that, that might be my new angle i might yeah like <laughs> subscribe you know and you just get these albums every you know so so many months or whatever like it'll be like the uh readers or what is that publishing you know like uh i forgot what they used to be called but you know what i'm talking about it's like almost like a mail order album deal you know what i mean like but yeah, yeah i might have to like the old school, what was it, the Columbia Records old school thing? Oh, yeah, that was the greatest. I, I remember <laughs> I, I, I split the Eddie Murphy broad tape. Oh, my mom hated that. She was so <laughs> mad at me. I mean, we wound up laughing, you know, to the album together. But at first, she was like, wait, how did you even do this? I was like, well, I just checked the box. And I put it in the mail. And next thing you know, we have a box. Can you pay this bill? <laughs> She's like, what? You better get, yeah, no, that didn't work that, that easy. But, yeah, no, that... I should definitely come up with some because, man, I had this ill concept that I don't even want to talk about about uh, about a year ago that uh, like a whole nother angle of releasing albums. You know, I mean, nothing's new under the sun. So when I say, it, you know, someone would be like, oh, I came up with that idea. You know what I mean? It's yeah. always that. But I, yeah, I swear I had like the grandest idea. It's just that um, it definitely would take weight. You know, that's one thing is like Up Above has always provided you know, enough for me to release music. You know what I mean? They've never been like a tour booking house. They've never been like a marketing agency. They've, we've just, you know, we had a decent sized barrel gun, 
and decent sized bullets that got heard. You know what I mean? And whereas like I've never really experienced that like cannon like boom like when it drops you hear about it. Like that's definitely one thing that uh that has impacted me. And I know if I was a part of that system they would stifle my you know, oh no, you can't put out um, album out for a whole year because we got to promote this right you know and that would just drive me crazy so i you know but the idea i have though i'm telling you man it, it's like you can almost open a record store with it and just like yeah it's just crazy but oh, that's i don't know maybe one day i'll wake up and i'll be like man you know i gotta talk to some people and make it happen so i don't know we'll see <laughs> No doubt, no doubt. Elemento. So once again, man, just to let folk know um, that you got the, the new album that's out right now that they can pick up, 25-8. It's Elemento and Mr. Brady. It's it's uh, it's on Herbnet Records. It's all over your, your digital outlets, man. And um, definitely encourage people to go out and, and just con- continue to support this cat, man, and, and, and subscribe to the to the Elemento <laughs> sweepstakes. There it you know? is. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, right, right, right quick, man. Let everybody know. I know that you're on a social media thing. Let everybody know how they can uh, how they can connect with on you with, uh, with you on social media. Okay, yeah. I'm um, on Twitter. I'm at James K Elemento. That's at James K Elemento, and the same goes for Instagram. That's at James K Elemento. So yeah, man, big ups to everybody. I I super appreciate, you know, you taking the time to chop it up with me and then anyone that has been listening to this, I truly appreciate you. This isn't just a sales pitch, this isn't a ploy. The you know, just be too blessed to be stressed. That's all I'm saying is like just appreciate the blessings that are right in front of your face. Don't worry about anyone else's face. Appreciate your blessings and I, I guarantee your world will be better and if we have a chain effect for that, then all of us will be living better and we don't need to subscribe to the BS and we just, you know, we have to uplift each other and live good and, and, and be good to each other. And buy my albums. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. No, no, you can pirate it. I don't even care. Just burn it, just listen to it. That's all I have. That's I what's up. Care. That's what's up, man. Elemento. Uh, brother, thank you again, man. Thanks so much, man. Thank Truly you, appreciate Cliff. you, dude. For sure, for sure. All right, y'all. This is another episode of Cliff Notes, man. Uh, subscribe and uh, be on the lookout for the next one. All right, y'all. Y'all be blessed until we meet again. Peace. Woo!